Thank you. I've also, like, like my colleagues here um, at the podium, we've been involved in climate talks for a long time. Uh, in 1988, I was part of the organizing team on behalf of the Government of Canada for organizing the first global comprehensive scientific conference. It was called Our Changing Atmosphere, Implications for Global Security. And the consensus statement of the scientists coming from that conference in 1988 was this. Humanity is conducting an unintended, uncontrolled, globally pervasive experiment whose ultimate consequences could be second only to global nuclear war." End quote. Since that time, we've seen conference after conference, as, as my colleague Kennedy Graham has, has reviewed. And at the same time, the scientific certainty has increased. Uh, those things that were once the warnings of scientists based on projections are now the headlines. And still we dither, and we don't move anywhere near uh, quickly enough or with the kind of understanding of the immensity of the threat, we are overwhelmed with the inertia of fossil fuel lobbying. And now in the terms of the direct scientific information that we have, despite the fact that world governments signed on to a commitment to avoid going to a two degrees global average temperature increase, two degrees Celsius global average above what it was before the Industrial Revolution, and with the goal of trying to avoid 1.5 degrees global average temperature increase, the collective commitments of all the countries have been judged by the IPCC to be completely deficient to avoid two degrees, and everybody knows this, and the draft texts in the preambular sections speak in marvelous terms about understanding the urgency, understanding the threat. But when the rubber hits the road, and in this case, the rubber is attached to big fat SUVs, nobody is prepared of the big fossil fuel emitting countries to live up to the promises they've made in the past. And I have to say that the EU is somewhat of an exception in this to having more than met its Kyoto targets. But Canada, my own country, I'm so ashamed of the track record and the positions taken uh, by my own government. But there's, it's more than one government that's at fault here. There is a disconnect between the warnings of science, which are now very clear. We hit 400 parts per million this year. If we allow greenhouse gas emissions to continue to build up in the atmosphere, we have no chance. And on the collective commitments, even if every government in the world met its current commitments, we would shoot right past two degrees. And if we end up with what many are projecting now at four degrees, or I saw it, it, today one of the scientists saying five degrees, we run the very real risk of moving into an era of runaway global warming, which is unstoppable and accelerating, and humanity will no longer have a chance to do anything about it. So for all of those NGOs who just walked out, this is historic. If people don't know, I've never seen anything like this, and I've been participating in many, many COPs. This was a strong statement, a protest of the, this disconnect between what the science is warning us. The atmosphere isn't interested in negotiating with humanity. We cannot talk the atmosphere out of moving all of our life support systems into reverse. And if we keep loading up greenhouse gases in the fashion we've been doing, we will have no choice but to start a triage operation of deciding what parts of the planet look the most savable and how many people will die. This is completely unacceptable, and we still have time to stop it. I just, I just wanted to add one thing, and I, I certainly I agree that the European Union has tremendous potential to take the lead, and in fact is, is likely the only, well the U.S. could still do something, given that uh, President Obama now says that he really wants to see climate action and in his second term has used a lot of executive orders of things he can do from the White House without having to engage support from Congress and Senate. So there is some chance, I suppose, that if State Department officials actually got the word back uh, and someone in the White House actually cared about the outcome in Warsaw, they could change their negotiating instructions. That's still a possibility. I just wanted to say that in, in the context of Canada, uh, I do want to stress that 80 percent of Canadians want climate action. 80 percent of Canadians continue to be very concerned about the issue. Uh, we have a very strange voting system in Canada wherein the current uh, Conservative Prime Minister who entertain, has, enjoys the majority of seats in the House of Commons uh, was, uh, received those seats with 39 percent of the popular vote. So we do have a majority of Canadians 
who want climate action. And today, actually, Al Gore is in Ontario with the Premier of Ontario for the celebration of Ontario shutting down all its coal plants. So to the extent that we've had any reduction in emissions, it's been through actions at sub-national governments combined with the economic downturn in 2008. And the only thing the federal government has done so far is the vehicle emission regulations, which, were, which had to be done in lockstep with the United States because we have a shared car market. So we don't have a climate plan in Canada. We, we, I'm ashamed of the fact that we're the only country that has actually legally withdrawn from Kyoto. Of all the 190 countries that ratified Kyoto, we've done this. But I just wanted to emphasize that Canada is not Stephen Harper. He is our Prime Minister right now. He, is, he has been against the Kyoto Protocol in opposition. He's dismantled our climate plans. But as soon as he leaves office, which I hope every day will be sooner than later, through resignation, if not through election, we will be able to have a country that will participate once again in good faith with a commitment to climate action. But what we've done in dismantling a lot is, is pretty unforgivable, and, and I do apologize. But uh, I think there, we can get things back on track if we had leadership here this week from other partners.